What's up guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome to another Pokemon Sword and Shield VGC 2021 video. Today I'll be bringing you guys a team report as well as a breakdown and rental code for the team that I used in my Players Cup 2 run. If you're not familiar with what the Players Cup 2 is, it is a online tournament that you had to qualify for via the online qualifier uh, ladder, which took place a couple of months ago, I think, maybe like one month ago, I can't remember exactly how long it was. Uh, however, uh, once you qualified through that, if you were top 256 in your region, uh, you qualified to get into the Players' Cup 2 uh, secondary stage, which was a double elimination tournament uh, with the VGC 2021 rules. And yeah, uh, the team that I used is actually really fun. It's one of my favorite teams of all time that I've ever built, pretty much. I think it's a really fun team, and it looks kind of standard on paper, but if you know me, if you know how I team build, there is some heat on the team if you look a little bit below the surface. So if you guys enjoyed this same point in time, do me a favor, leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications, because I'll be bringing you guys some daily Pokemon Sword and Shield VGC content. And when I say leave a like on the video, I mean like, do it now. These videos take a while to crank out, and all those, all those likes really help me out. So yeah, let's go ahead and get into it. So first up on the team, we have a Galarian Moltres. Now Galarian Moltres is a really cool Pokemon this season because it's able to get a Berserk boost uh, by going below half HP if it gets hit by the opponent. Uh, on top of that, it's a really great weakness policy Pokemon because it hits a decent speed tier at 90, has decent special attack at 100, and has great bulk at 90 HP, 90 defense, and 125 special defense. With uh, prominent Electric types like Raichu and Regieleki hitting on the special side usually, uh, it makes it easy for you to set up a light screen and be able to take the hits. Now traditionally Moltres would be run next to a Regieleki with this sort of team, but I opted for Tapu Koko and I'll get into why I did that uh, later on in the video. Uh, but this set we're going to be running is Weakness Policy, Fiery Wrath, Air Slash, Nasty Plot Protect with Berserk, 100 HP, 252 Special Attack, and 156 Speed with the Timid Nature. What this will allow me to do is, after two max airstreams, I'll be outspeeding uh, Dragapult, which is really important. It also grants me a lot of bulk with 100 HP getting doubled when I'm Dynamaxed. This thing is usually going to be our Dynamax candidate, and behind a screen, if you go for a Nasty Plot, like this is a hypothetical turn that could happen. You get Light Screen or Reflect Up, set up a Nasty Plot, you get hit by a super effective move, and you go into Berserk range. That brings you up to plus 5 special attack, a very scary place for Moltres to be on if you're on the receiving end, uh, especially since the fact that it can speed boost and Fiery Wrath hits both opponents, has a chance to flinch, and on top of that, if you turn it into Max Darkness, it will lower your opponent's special defense, which combos well with other Pokemon on the team, as well as just comboing into the next attack, which will do even more damage. So yeah, a very scary Pokemon, one of my favorites in the new Pokedex, so... Yeah, let's go ahead and get into the next Pokemon, which is Tapu Koko. Now, usually Regieleki would be in this slot for many teams, but I opted for Tapu Koko uh, because Tapu Koko has two stabs in Electric and Fairy. Later on in the team, you'll see that I ran an Alola Marowak, and if I were to run a Regieleki next to an Alola Marowak, I wouldn't have like agency to choose between my moves. I would have to choose an electric move and be absolutely useless next to my own Marowak. I can't Volt Switch freely if my Marowak's on the field, where Tapu Koko actually allows me to run Dazzling Gleam as a secondary way of hitting opponents. On top of that, uh, Tapu Koko is able to, I, I guess, invest enough defense or HP where behind a Reflect, it can take Jolly, Life Orb, Landorus's Earthquake, where Regieleki could do that, however, it takes so much investment that it's not really worth it in the end. So Tapu Koko met my needs in that in that situation. I really hate facing Life Orb Landers because it can catch a lot of teams off guard if you're not calced for it. So Tapu Koko, while it is slower than Regieleki and doesn't hit quite as hard, uh, it is able to actually be a little bit bulkier than it in in situations where it matters most. So the set we're running is Tib and Nature, Light Clay, Electric Surge, Light Screen, Reflect, Thunderbolt, Dazzling Gleam with 164 HP, 92 Special Attack, and Max Speed. The reason we have 164 HP is because that's exactly the amount of HP that you need to live a Life Orb Landorus's Earthquake behind Reflect, which is important for the team because if you're facing a Landorus, what it allows you to do is get Reflect up first, live the hit, and then guarantee you get your Light Screens up. Now with both screens up for 8 turns, that's essentially the entirety of a VGC match if it's going at the pace it usually does this format. So screens up for the entire game is really cool, and I don't have to run something like Alola Ninetales which would also set up hail and isn't quite as fast or bulky as Tapu Koko. So yeah, Tapu Koko, really cool member of the team, and the screens that it sets up help out both Moltres and pretty much everything on the team, like Alola Marowak, Tapu Fini Landris, but especially Kartana, which is our next Pokemon. Now this Kartana is the Assault Vest spread that I'm running on essentially every team with a Kartana on it, and 
I don't really have to get into too much here. It's running Aerial Ace for Max Airstream, Leaf Blade, Smart Strike, Sacred Sword, Assault Vest with 68 HP, Max Special Defense, 188 Speed with a Jolly Nature. It's a great Grass type, it helps beat Tapu Fini reliably. It's able to uh, get Incineroar with the Sacred Sword on the switch in if you want to try to predict that for the Tapu Fini, uh, which is really important if you want to like succeed with uh, a Kartana, you have to be able to make a read like that. Uh, so Kartana, great Pokemon on the team overall. It struggles with fire type attacks, but I found that behind Reflect or Light Screen while Dynamaxed, this thing is able to eat a hit even from a fire type attacker occasionally if it isn't like the strongest hit. So uh, that is really cool for this Pokemon. I enjoy using it quite a bit, and it's able to snowball a lot with uh, Max Airstream, giving you both a speed boost and an attack boost if you decide to uh, try to go for a KO on that turn with it. Next up on the team, we have my own Life Orb Landris. Standard set, uh, Life Orb Intimidate, Earthquake, Fly, Rock Slide, Protect, Max Speed, Max Attack, 4 HP. Now this guy, um, he shows up to a lot of matchups versus Stack Attack of Trick Room because the Life Orb does catch Ndidi and Stack Attack off guard, where Stack Attack is typically invested to be able to eat a hit from non-Life Orb Landris. Uh, this will catch him off guard, always secure in the KO, unless they're Shookaberry, which is a whole different situation. In that case, you have to sort of play towards Trick Room and try to do your best to uh, win in that in that situation. However, uh, being able to cycle out Intimidates with this guy is really useful as well, especially when you have screens on the field. It helps Tapu Fini live hits from Kartana, since at minus one my Tapu Fini is invested to live that. Uh, Kartana is able to take a Flare Blitz behind like Reflect and Dynamaxed and a couple of Intimidates, so that's really cool if you can manage to pull that off. It helps out Moltres with living things like Max Rockfall, Rock Slide, etc. Uh, it's also very good for living the occasional uh, Max Hailstorm from Metagross. So Landris, while it is a very offensive Pokemon and a great Dynamax option if you want to go for Life or Max Airstreams, it is also sort of a support Pokemon in the sense that its Intimidate is really useful to cycle in and out. Next up we have Tapu Fini, almost a requirement for this format. I think you can get away with without running Tapu Fini, like you don't need to run it on every team, but it is such a reliable Pokemon that it's hard to find a reason not to. This guy's going to be running Muddy Water, Moonblast, Icy Wind Protect with a Citrus, a citrus Berry, Misty Surge, 244 HP, 116 Defense, 124 Special Attack, 4 Special Defense, and 20 Speed. So I started off EVing this guy by giving him 20 speed because I knew for a fact I wanted to make sure I was hitting 108 speed, which is enough to outspeed things like Metagross speed crept for Dragapult at plus 2, um, and anything that really wants to be speed crept for Dragapult at plus 2 outside of Tailwind will be able to catch him off guard by being a slightly faster Tapu Fini than they're used to facing. Uh, the physical bulk, the 244 HP and 116 defense, 244 allows me to hit an even number which makes hitting Citrus Berry a little bit more reliable, um, and and the 116 defense on top of that is to allow me to live minus one, uh, le minus one leaf blade from max attack Kartana. The special attack is just dumped as well as the special defense, which is just dumped only four left over, because uh, I wanted this to be a relatively offensive while still bulky Tapu Fini. Muddy Water is great for getting accuracy drops on Pokemon as well as hitting things that uh, are getting follow me away. It's a spread move, so that's really useful. Moonblast is a great stab option. Occasional Dynamax this Tapu Fini, and if you go for uh, Max Geyser into a second Max Geyser, it's actually doing significant damage despite me foregoing Calm Mind for Icy Wind. Speaking of Icy Wind, it's really useful in the endgame in case you're facing off versus like a Speed Tide Kartana, you'll be able to Icy Wind them and then knock them out. Um, like if you have your katana in the field. Uh, on top of that, just the speed control in general is really, really useful when you're running it next to a uh, Galarian Moltres in case you end up in a max airstream battle where you're just trading them back and forth. The final Pokemon, the heat of the team, is going to be this Alola Marowak, and the pun is completely intended there. It is a fire type. It is very heat. Uh, this guy's going to be running Flare Blitz, Shadow Bone, Burning Jealousy, Protect, with a Thick Club and the ability Lightning Rod. His EV spread is 252 HP, 196 attack, and 60 defense with a relaxed nature in zero speed IVs. Now you might be wondering, Marcos, why would you run Marowak when you could roll compress Marowak into Tapu Koko, or when you can roll compress Tapu Koko and Marowak into a single Raichu? And that's because that would give me a pretty difficult Trick Room matchup without it. This guy is meant to deter Trick Room. Uh, if you see a Marowak and you're Trick Room team is just Glacier plus Dusclops, which is very common in the format, you're going to think twice, because this Marowak is actually EV uh, trained to be able to eat a Max Quake uh, from a Glacier. So if the Trick Room is up, Glacier will go for the Max Quake into you, boosting its special defense, but you always live it because you have that relaxed nature with the 60 defense investment, allowing you to get that Burning Jealousy off 
burning it for the remainder of the match and making it essentially useless since not only did you deny it a KO where it expected one, but it, you're also getting it to a minus two. From there on, you can cycle in Landorus if you're feeling, you know, especially courageous uh, to get minus one attack each time you get him in. Tapu Fini from that point can kind of clean up. Or if you're in a situation where Marowak is, faced, is forced to 1v1 the Glacier, you can Dynamax up and Max Flare will always two-shot it. And since you take less than 100% while you're not Dynamaxed, when you are Dynamaxed, you'll be taking less than 50%, which means that you'll always win the 1v1 versus the Glacier. So that's a really cool Pokemon. On top of that, it's very easy to pick up KOs versus Dusclops with this guy since you're running Shadow Bone. And some of you guys will be wondering, Marcus, why run Shadow Bone when you could run Poltergeist, a stronger move? Well, the reason is uh, a lot of Pokemon in this format run berries. A lot of Pokemon in this format run weakness policy. And if you're facing down a Tapu Fini, which if, if you want to do me a favor, watch the VODs of my uh, run for the Players' Cup. They're going to be in the card at the end of the video. You can see this thing. You can see this entire team in action. If you're facing down a Tapu Fini and it's already eaten its berry and you go for Poltergeist, you have no way of hitting it since the move fails without an item. So if you're using Shadow Bone, you can actually consistently hit your opponents, which is really, really important in the format. Yes, Poltergeist will do more damage like initially and overall, I guess, uh, but it's much less reliable in terms of actually landing the move since it is not 100% accurate and it depends on the item. So Shadow Bone, amazing option for this guy. I personally think that if you're not running Shadow Bone in a format with so many weakness policies, berries, etc., you're kind of throwing. So yeah. Uh, that's this team. Uh, let me know what you guys think about it in the comment section down below. I really appreciate every single comment. Every single like in the video is amazing. Uh, the code for the team I showed at the beginning. If you want it, uh, you can check it out. And once again, if you want to do me a favor, check out the end card with the battles I have. I have a whole playlist of my Players' Cup 2 matches. And if you want to support me even further, check out the Patreon. I'll be uploading a, another video for the Patreons today. And yeah, with that, I'm going to call it, guys. Do me a favor. Leave a like in the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.